Welcome to Peter's Painting Podcast, where I talk to my 87-year-old dad, Peter McKee, about paintings and life. Today's paintings are Church Wall. Now I'll give you a better view of that a little bit. It's Church Wall and Swimming Upstream. Once again, it's Church Wall and Swimming Upstream. These paintings, as all of the paintings in Peter's Painting Podcast, are available for purchase. Just have to inquire in the comments. And one of the cool things about buying one of uh, my dad's paintings is you actually will interact directly with my mom and dad, Peter and Eileen McKee. So Swimming Upstream and Church Wall are the two paintings um, that are available. 18 by 24, all originals done by my dad and we get the uh stories coming up so let's call peter mckee and peter's painting podcast and see if we can uh, talk to dad see what's up here today hello daddy O. hey darren what's uh, going on uh, we're we're rolling here are you ready for the podcast I sure am. All sure right. Am. Well, here we go. All right. First of all, just catch us up with news. What's going yeah. on with you this week? What's happening? What's on your mind? Well, well first thing, we were very sorry to hear about Amy's mother uh, passing oh, away. Oh, yeah. Me that too. was sad. Uh, we sent her a, a card to Amy. Oh, that's so nice. she she get that in a day or two, and that was that was tough. And uh, uh, oh, one thing that happened here in Ipswich, kind of odd, is that a guy went into the True North brewery and he carried a concealed pistol and it went off accidentally and shot him in the leg and it hit uh, uh, two other people fragments hit them and they all had to go to the hospital what was, and it's so well, you gotta back up here for me is yeah. this a restaurant in ipswich no i said it well it's it's built about three years ago great big brewery they it's like ipswich ale you know a competitor and they make their own brew and beer there. And so where forth. where is this located in Ipswich? Oh, right across from where the Ford dealership used to be, right uh, right there at the corner. Okay. Up in, uh, you know where that is. Anyways, uh, they, is that near? Is that near the? Yeah, I don't know if I know where that is. That near the hospital, Cape Ann, or uh, if you uh, if you're heading towards Cape Ann. There used to be a Chevy dealership on the yeah. left and a Ford dealership Is on the right. Is that like kind of where Travis Doty and his family live? That that area? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, area. right up All there. Right. But it's All on right. the it's on the left side of the road. All right. And it's a nice it's a nice place. That's a lot of families go in there with their kids and dogs and uh. They what eat, was this guy have... doing with a gun in the in the bar? The well, bar. the thing is, nobody knows. The thing is that Massachusetts has probably the strictest gun laws in the country, and if and this is it, if you get caught with a gun a pistol a rifle or anything that's not registered to you you get an automatic year in jail and hundreds of people have been jailed but for not having a um license for their weapon wow. so this was a concealed weapon is even worse so he's he's got i mean the charges are just uh, uh i think carrying a loaded firearm without a license uh carrying a firearm with a license uh without a license um discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a building, possession of ammunition without a firearms identification card, wow. and three counts of assault and battery with a dangerous <laughs> weapon. This guy, this guy's in trouble. He's a 35-year-old guy from New Hampshire. And uh, Dad, we, he, got a, he, we got a new feature on the podcast, e reading the Ipswich Chronicle police blotter. Uh, just no. This was the uh, just a, a section of the Salem News. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't remember all the charges. Well, you got it so down. I, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that was that. And uh, hey, tell me about your uh, avid caddy party. Is this? Yeah. What the hell's a keg? What the hell's a keg stand? I don't know, Dad. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what that is. Sounds outrageous, Dad. I, don't worry. I won't be doing it. <laughs> Kegs and lobster. Where the lobster going to come from? You well, we, we have a guy who runs a food truck called Loco Lobster. And oh. uh, he's a fan of the podcast. And he's yeah. uh, bringing his lobster truck. So we're going to have Loco oh, Lobster oh. on scene. So, oh, my God. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, have a bite for me and mom. <laughs> I will. I will. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's on Monday. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's a. Uh, the, the national championship game is on, but it's more just like it's, you know, it's a local business, small business. 
Yeah. And yeah. Um, this podcast is a small business, and it's just uh, some folks coming to coming together, and it's yeah. uh, it's yeah. cool. It's a it's a cool thing. Well, it sounds it sounds like fun. I mean, a yeah. couple of beers and a lobster. How do you beat that? No, no, no. A free yeah. golf too. You know, I I think you'd yeah. like playing yeah. one of these. Um, have you ever played one of these golf simulators? Yeah, I have once. Yes, I have. So yeah. what did you think about that? You like it? Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. It was very accurate. And uh, I, uh, I, I didn't go back to I forget where it was, but it, it wasn't around here. It was some other part. But they, uh, they're starting to sprout up around here in different areas. There's a brand new one in the North Shore Mall. Yeah. And you have to get a reservation to get in there. Uh, make a reservation to do it. Well, yeah, this be- is kind of how this place works. It's actually a private. It's called a, a golf lounge. Uh, okay. So it's it's not like open to the public. You have to be a member. Now the oh. the event that we're doing is kind of like, hey, come check it out and that sort of thing. So you can't just drift in. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you got to be. It's like a tea time. You know. It's like um, a yeah. membership. Yeah. So. I oh, mean, I it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's year round and uh, you can come in more or less whenever you want. And yeah. uh, they have two bays that have actual courses and another one that's like a driving range. So if you just want to oh, hit some balls, cool. you know, you can yeah. just do that. And they're, yeah. each of the bays is really expensive. Like the simulators are not cheap. So they're, they're hoping to add more. Uh, but mm-hmm. right now they got two in the driving range bay and um, great guys. And, uh, you know, and, and Monday's going to well, be. Well, it sounds a, like fun. Yeah. Do yeah, they have more yeah. room to expand? Oh, they do. They do. Can... They do. Oh, they've got, good. they've got plenty of space. And right now they got like, they got like a ping pong table and a pool table in there, but they could easily put yeah. in three or four more bays easy. But again, it's expensive. So we'll see how it goes yeah. for them, but I'm happy to help them out. And, uh, oh, well, it sounds good. The more uh, yeah. the exposure they get, the more successful they'll be. I obviously. hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, you know, next time you come and visit, we'll go there. We'll hit some golf balls. <laughs> be fun. Yeah. Hey, by the way, how did Nate keep that secret of having a baby due in August from you guys? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I felt bad. I, I should be asking him some more personal questions, I guess. So, I mean, like, wow! Oh, I mean, I'm not blaming you. I just thought, wow, that's pretty cool. He's I know still, we were stunned. Yeah. We were like, what? <laughs> so well, he didn't tell any. He didn't tell anybody. Obviously, they they just. Well, I didn't tell us. Them. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, uh, yeah. I had a question. Sure. Is Jerry Jerry Jones and Prime getting together? Is that a? Is uh, that gonna? I don't know. I don't Is know. That, it's don't been know. mentioned by by you guys. I didn't know what the, the well. What that's Nick's? that's some um, that's some um, really wild sort of speculation based on where Shadur Sanders may go and what Dak Dak Prescott's um uh, unre. I mean, listen, if they sign Dak Prescott to a new contract, then forget it. But um, he is not signed to a new contract beyond this particular season. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. It could happen. Yeah. We'll see uh, that. Okay. Uh, what about the house? Is that all closed? Done. You, you're renting it back. What the hell is that about? I didn't it's called, understand. Called uh, post occupancy, and so oh. it is sold. It is not. I do not own this house anymore. I do not own it. Okay. Oh, okay. You're it renting is, it back. Yeah. It is not my house. Um, and I do own another house, and um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not living okay. in that either. So uh, uh, you're not in the pet. You're not in the bed. Uh, uh, the ping pong room. Uh, for the broadcast no i am so we're oh. we're we can't move in until after may 17th to our oh, new place and we oh, okay. basically agreed uh for 60 days so yeah. we we have to be out um by may 31st oh, so okay. well, that gives you plenty of time. That's yeah good. well it gives us theoretically it gives us two weeks to move into the new place and yeah. um so yeah it's weird like we live here but we do not own this house this is not my house anymore <laughs> It's, well, it seems like it's, it's convenient. It works out for both parties. I, I am staying in a very um, uh, uh, known Airbnb. That's where I am right now. I am. Uh, oh, you're in a B and B. Well, my really? home, uh, my house is essentially my old house. Well, are you? Are we really losing track of what's going on here, Dad? As I make a yep. couple little jokes. So, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. All right. I think everybody yeah. else kind of gets it. Let's okay. talk about the paintings, Dad. Okay. Uh, All right. Let's start with uh, swimming upstream. Very spring-like. Okay. Very nice yeah, painting for the spring. Yeah. yeah. 
So talk to okay. me about swimming upstream. Swimming upstream. All right. Well, um, it seems that uh, as I get older, I remember more and more of my childhood. Uh, and as you know, I grew up on a road called uh, Water Street, which was about a quarter of a mile from Hingham Harbor. And just before the harbor, uh, fronting a cemetery was a large upstream pond and a creek that emptied in and out every 12 hours. Okay. And uh, some of us neighborhood kids, we got together, the Bresnahans and Robert Carr and some people, locals. And uh, we would um, build rafts out of scrap lumber and float them up and down the, uh, not only the pond, but the um, uh, the river. And uh, we fished for smelt. And we had these bamboo uh, two-link spreader poles, two wires that spread out, and you could put a hook on each one. And sometimes we caught two smelt at a time. They used to run pretty heavy at, at that time. They don't run there anymore, of course. But uh, anyways, uh, the, these um, those things, you could almost catch them with your fingers. Uh, I imagine this, but those, uh, I imagine doing that, but these slippery silver fish were pretty hard to catch by hand. But we caught a bunch of them uh, by, by the fishing pole and so forth. Um, anyways, about... 40 years ago, the town filled in the pond with dirt hmm. where we used to ice skate in the winter and, and fish in the summer. And my parents are uh, now buried there. Oh, uh, okay. And, okay. Yeah. And, and, and the, I know where that uh, is. Right yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, from time to time, memories pop up of my parents. Uh, the pond, the rafts, the fishing, the ice. It's such an advanced age of the I am. And I decided to paint the smelt different sizes and colors when I, uh, when I made this, when I made this drawing. Okay. And, uh, so that's basically, we used to catch so many smelt down yeah. when they were running, running really high that we would, we would get a couple of hundred in two or three hours and we would give them all to the neighbors and they taste really nice there. You can eat the bones that they're, they're, uh, there's very soft bone and a very, uh, not smelly, but fragrant fish. Mm. And we had a lot of fun, but of course they, those and the clams and Hingham Harbor, they all ran out years ago, but that's basically uh, how that came, uh, painting came to be. Well, it's beautiful. And you know, it's, I think it's, um, I, you know, I thought they were kind of flowers or leaves at first, but now that you say what you're saying, it's like, Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, yeah. <laughs> That was what was in my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And, and you know what it would be, dad, I think this would be a beautiful, print for like uh, a drape or like a lady's dress or yeah, something like that. Be. I think it would be yeah. beautiful for a couple of those, those reasons. So yeah. I, how, how many times have you um, taken one of your paintings and, and manufactured something else um, with, with the drawing? Like what, what else have you done with some of your paintings? You mean made them into like a shirt or something? Well, or anything, yeah. I know I know you got some postcards and some other stuff, but like... Oh, um... yeah, yeah. I did the postcards. I made those. And I had some... Um, I think we, oh, we've taken some, a few pictures of a couple, three or four of them, and just blew them up a little bit bigger uh, on the computer. Uh, but it's just basically the, the painting. You know, the, the, the thing that did the most different was having those postcards uh, yeah. made up. Yeah. And I've still, I've still got a few of them around, yeah, hanging yeah. around. And uh, <laughs> but I haven't, uh, haven't done much of that type of thing. Uh, just, uh, in fact, I haven't, I haven't painted for a couple of weeks. I just get in, <laughs> okay. into a little, a little uh, breathing area here. But I'll be cranking it up again soon. All right, all right, uh, yeah. All right. All hopefully, right. let's get yeah. on to uh, church wall. Church okay. wall. Church wall. Yeah. All right, I. Boy, there's got to be a story here because I don't see a church and I don't necessarily see a wall. But help me out here with church okay, wall. I'll, I'll help you out. Uh, first of all, there's not much of a backstory to this painting. It's pretty much just as you see. But uh, you remember, uh, well, you know the town just south of us is uh, called Hamilton. Sure. And in, and this town, you know Hamilton. And in this town stands uh, a flat-faced stone church with two square towers. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But it's just up past where the tennis courts are in Hamilton Square. It's right up there on that road. And um, the walls look like a jigsaw puzzle. And I never tire of looking at them. They just 
fascinate me. For some reason, they're really crazy. I've never seen a pattern like that on a church. In fact, sometimes I'll go out of my way a little just to gaze at the walls of this uh, magnificent structure with I call irregular wall facings. Anyways, the church's natural color is light brown. So obviously, I took some liberties when I painted this abstract painting. All right. And ba basically, that's it. It's just an abstract that uh, I just went a little crazy with in the colors. But it does uh, all germinate from that church uh, wall facing. It's Dad, amazing. what's your uh, – maybe we can go back on some story time. Um, it's So so it's not really necessarily inspired by all that much. And uh, and, and, and is there anything else you want to specifically say about it? It's a beautiful abstract, though. It's it's beautiful. Well, no, it's just – yeah, it just, it, just uh, it, it, it initiated my uh, feeling for doing a painting. Uh, I didn't think of it when I first saw it, but I'd never seen such – uh, face work on a church before it's usually mm. if this face work it's it's pretty regular it's pretty even and so forth but this particular church is very uneven and multi multi-sized and i really uh think that was a, a really act of great craftsmanship by the people that built that church it's probably 200 years oh dad it's right yeah. it's right it's right off the downtown there and uh, it's when i one of my little treasures to look at when I go out by there. Yeah, it's it's yeah. beautiful. What what's uh, boy, you you have a long relationship with the church, don't you? You go way back <laughs> with your. Well, the church. churches I went to were very white, you know, and and white uh, boards, just lumber, nothing nothing stone. Never went to a stone church. It was a Protestant stone church up the end of Water Street, up by Main Street. Yeah. Remember that one, St. John's? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that of course, a, of course. That was a pretty good church. We used to play Cowboys and Indians <laughs> behind there when we were kids. <laughs> but you were, you were, you were an altar, you were an altar boy, right? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. Everybody was in those days, all the young kids, you know, yeah, Catholic yeah. kids. Catholic kids. And, and, uh, yeah, and, Catholic kids. Oh, one time, you won't believe this, but uh, one time, there was a priest down there, uh, that uh, was a kidder. He used to kid us. And one time he told me, listen, when the pastor, we used to do uh, sometimes masses in the morning at 7, 7.30. He said, I was, what, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, he said, uh, next time that the priest, uh, the pastor, uh, leaves uh, the, they used to wear a hat, a square kind of hat, these pastors. And he says, when he leaves, he says, this time, because of the date or something, make sure you put it on your head when you walk off ahead of him off the altar. This is the downstairs church in the morning. There's probably only about 12 people there. But anyway, so I did that. And uh, so I go in the the, the rec rectory, rectory there, and the pastor yells and screams me, what are you doing? Put my hat on. And <laughs> Oh, my God. And there, was, uh, there was the sisters there, the Burns sisters. They were all about 80 years old. Oh, my God. Trailers. And they couldn't believe it. So what they did, they unknowns to me, they had told somebody and the story, and this story got around and actually got in a newspaper about me putting this hat on this pastor's hat on my head. <laughs> Anyways, that was a that was a crazy story. I I don't know if I could do a painting on that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The pastor's hat. <laughs> All right, Dad. Uh, sounds good. You and Mom got any big plans for the weekend, or uh, what are you guys doing? Well, uh, we've got yeah. Actually, yeah, we're looking now at, at uh, going out to some hear some music. It was a terrible storm here yesterday. Oh, uh, not yesterday. Oh, the day before. Yeah. it was unbelievable. Did you guys get hit with the storm? You know, we do live more than two thousand miles away, so I don't know if the storms would run into each <laughs> other like that. Yeah. So no, it was yeah. pretty nice yeah. yesterday and the day before here in Colorado. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. Yeah, Do but I, I, you know, Dad, I'll, I'll tell you this: when there's a weather disturbance that is the same in Colorado as in Massachusetts, we're yeah. probably our all goners if that happens. I that mean, we're the, that would probably be the end of uh, days for everybody if that that actually was happening. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Um, hey, I got something. I, did you see recently the? Uh, Eight part uh, Netflix thing called Ripley. No, Did what's, you have what's to see that? that? No, what's that about? Boy, uh, well, it was. There was you remember the movie, The Amazing uh, Mr. Ripley, when Matt, Matt Damon was yes. in it years, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, there's. I think the author's name Patricia Hightower, a high power Hightower. Anyways, she's really a great writer. I've read a couple of her novels, and 
she traced uh, this. She has made some different books about, I guess, five different books about this Ripley character. And uh, he's it's an amazing. It's one of the most. Mom and I have we watched it the last couple of days. It's one of the most amazing things we've ever seen on television. Okay, all right. And it's called Ripley. So it's just a, a right. heads up to you if you get any time to check it out. Yeah, I think it'd be well, well enjoy uh, enjoy the entertainment. All right, I'll check it out. All right, Dad. Yeah. Well, I love yeah. you, and I love you um, too. and uh, appreciate it. And we'll, I'll catch yeah. up with you later. But thank you for joining us. Okay, okay. thanks for calling, Darren. Take okay. care. I love you. Yeah. Okay, okay, will do. Yeah. That's my dad. Peter's Painting Podcast. So it's Church Wall and Swimming Upstream. Here, I'll get out of the way of that. So Swimming Upstream and Church Wall, and both are available for purchase. If you're interested, just inquire in the comments. And dad, he's the best. The absolute best. I mean, he took a two-week break. But he's going to get back to painting. So good. Crack the whip. Keep keep rolling out the paintings, Dad. Inquire in the comments if you're interested, and uh, those could be yours if you if you if you want. Peter's 